Let's further explore how messages built in Lyric Pro can interact with each other. In the previous sections, we built a lower third that'll seamlessly transition with similar messages. We also built a clock, made it persistent, and that uh, means it's going to leave it on the output with the other messages. So let's use both of these messages and make some minor changes to them to show more added power with Lyric Pro. The clock message that we made in part two was a static persistent message. Static's kind of boring, so let's add an animation that'll affect it off the screen. First, let's put the clock into a group. We touched on this subject a little bit already. It's always a good habit to take existing animated objects and put them into a group to ensure that a new animation will not alter the one already in place. Okay, so let's make this animation. We can either use one of the built-in transitions or create a new one. Right-click on the default tab and let's create our own by naming it Off. The grouped clock is selected in the scene graph, so we'll check the selected radio button. And our new timeline called Off, let's just create an animation to slide the clock off at the one second point. We previously named the clock message in the transition properties as Clock. So let's also add a description to this message. It can also be called Clock. And we'll re-record the message. Now let's go back to the lower third name super that we created and change the name of this message to coming up. We had previously made the effect in, effect out, and update transitions. We're just going to leave those alone at this point. The intention in this section is to show how one message can affect another message. In this case, I'll make the coming up bumper animate the lower third and the clock off the screen when the coming up animates on the screen. All right, let's show you how we can make this happen. Go to the Effect In Timeline tab of the Coming Up message. Navigate to the Events Properties. The left window here, you can see the available events. The one we want to use is Activation External, which means this message will activate a transition in a different message. Highlight it, press the Add button. You can see how doing that adds information to the bottom of the Events property. Now remember when we added a description to the Clock Message properties? Here's why we did that. In the message description, type the name that we typed earlier in the clock message. That was clock in this case. Because the exact match radio button is checked, it must be, oddly enough, an exact match. If you don't know the exact match, you can type CL and select begins with or contains if you wish, but in this case we know exactly what it's called. Next, move to the transition to activate area and type exactly what the name transition was in the clock. In this case, we called it off. If we wanted this message to affect the clock on the other frame buffer, we could select the All Frame Buffers radio button. Alright, we're done. Let's take a look at what we've got. I'll read the clock message and play it to air. Next, I'll read up a lower third super and add it to the output. Just for grins, I'll add a second lower third. That shows the transition we made in section 2. Note how these messages appear under the clock message because of how we specified a higher priority for that clock when we built it. The final message to read is the coming up bumper. Two things are going to happen when I play this to the output. First, the name super will affect off because the name of it is lower third and does not match the name of the coming up bumper. And two, because we have an external activation set, the clock will affect off the screen as well. So with Lyric Pro, it's simple to make a persistent message like a clock and with little effort, design a message to externally trigger these messages. Lyric Pro is really the only solution for all your broadcast needs.